Hi, it's Kent from Man About Tools, and this is a follow-up video to part three of my series on making garden box panels from lightweight concrete. These reinforced concrete panels link together to make long-lasting rot-proof garden boxes. In part three, I experimented with some concrete mixes looking for a good alternative to gravel-based concrete that was light and durable. In that part, I looked at three blends, as that was more than enough to cover in one video. The vermiculite blend was my favorite, but I wanted to try perlite as an aggregate. So that's the focus of this video, and to also add some color to the concrete. Perlite is a hard, highly porous material made by superheating volcanic glass. Some viewers thought that perlite would be superior to vermiculite, as perlite does not absorb as much water. I'll show them mixing, pouring, and unmolding, then look at the weight and durability results as compared to regular gravel-based concrete. If you haven't seen part one or part two of this series, then you might get more from this video if you watch them first. Link in the upper right or the description below. I'll be using the forms I built in part two of this series. I have plans available on my website, manabouttools.com. I also have a full blog post for this video with all the ingredients and ratios for the perlite mixes. There's a lot to cover here, so let's get started. This lightweight concrete blend is made from Portland cement, perlite, and sand. To some of the batches, I'll add a small amount of glass fiber for extra reinforcement. You add about one pound of this fiber per cubic yard of concrete. So when I calculated how much I needed per batch, it came down to a third of an ounce per 48 inch panel. Here's the proportions I used for the first attempt at perlite concrete. One part Portland cement, two parts perlite, and one part sand. These proportions are by volume. I didn't realize how dusty the perlite would be, so I was glad I was working outside. A mask would have been better, and I did wear one later on. I add the perlite and sand to my wheelbarrow first, and add a little water to wet the mix. Once it's well blended, I add the Portland cement and continue to add water a little at a time. When I saw that the mix ratio was looking good and the wet perlite concrete blended smoothly, I added half as much more of the ingredients in the same proportions to increase the batch size so I'd have enough to fill my 48 inch form. I add a few shovelfuls to the form and push the perlite mix around the pipes with a small trowel. I used a reciprocating saw without the blade to vibrate the form and settle the concrete mix. Then I laid in a section of reinforcing wire mesh. This galvanized wire mesh is cut from a large hog panel fence I bought from my local farm supply store. I used small bolt cutters to cut a piece of this heavy four gauge panel to fit the form. Then I topped up the rest of this and vibrated it some more. I use a trowel to smooth the surface. I liked the consistency of this first blend, so I decided to make another batch with the same proportions as the first. But this time, I'll add some glass fiber for more reinforcement. Perlite is very light, and it's easy to mix in a wheelbarrow. And for these tests, 
I like this method as I can really see how it's blending and how much water I need without overdoing it. The second batch went well. Like the first, half fill the form, vibrate the mix to settle it and bring bubbles to the surface, add the wire grid, then top up, settle and finish with a trowel. and I'll round off the sides when it sets up. It was the end of the day, so I covered the forms with plastic and left them to harden. The next morning, I set up to make two more batches, this time in the 36 inch forms. This third batch used the same proportions as the first two, but for this one, I'll add some red color. I add two ounces to the mix in the wheelbarrow and I'll add some glass fiber again. I start as before, blending the perlite and sand. I then dilute the red color in water and add it to the wheelbarrow. And wow, it was very red. Then I add some fiber. and finally the Portland cement. There were a few chunks of Portland, so I broke them up by hand. Now it's a matter of slowly adding water for just the right consistency. You can see the sheen of the vegetable oil spray I used on the forms before filling them. Pam cooking spray works very well. I cover the wires that wrap around the pipes to keep the oil off them while spraying. And like before, I filled the forms halfway, settled it a bit with a reciprocating saw, add the mesh and then top it up and smooth any bubbles with a trowel. The red color looked to be pretty uniform throughout the mix. I think the key is to add it to water first and to add it early in the blending. I was getting a pretty good feeling that the perlite blend would be a good lightweight alternative, similar to the vermiculite blend from part three of the series. So for the fourth form, I decided to change things up with the proportions and the type of cement. This blend then uses CSA cement, perlite, sand, and glass fiber. And I'll add some black color this time. I didn't have pure CSA cement, but a mix called Cementol. It already has some fine sand in the blend, so I modified my proportions to accommodate for that. The CSA based cement is stronger than Portland, so I figured I could use more perlite because of that. And with the Cementol having sand in it already, I reduced the amount of sand I would add to this blend and hoped that it would work. I used one part Cementol, three parts perlite, half a part sand, a pinch of fiber, and two ounces of the liquid pigment. With a greater ratio of perlite, I found this mix felt drier and not as smooth and sticky like the previous three. Cementol is fast setting, so I worked quickly. 
blending the sand and perlite with water first, then adding the cementol and more water. It didn't seem to settle as well with the recip saw, so I also tapped the form with a wooden mallet. In about 45 minutes, the CSA concrete was hardened, warm to the touch, and a white haze was forming as it was drying. I cured it for one hour by sprinkling it with water every 10 minutes or so. The next day, I removed the form sides and ends, and these castings came out fairly easily. I first stripped the 48 inch panels, removing the screws and gently wiggling the sides. then rocking the ends. Then tipping the panel up and prying off the base with the help of a paint scraper. Both 48 inch forms looked identical and time would tell if the addition of the glass fiber would make any difference. Next, I stripped the 36 inch red colored panel. It too looked good and I didn't see any issues. Right out of the form, it kind of looks like red clay brick. And finally, I stripped the black dyed CSA concrete panel. It felt harder and that's to be expected as it cures quicker than Portland. To help all the panels cure to their maximum strength, I completely submerged them in water in an old bathtub. After a few weeks, I removed them to dry slowly in my shop before weighing. Then I could test them for durability. As in part three of this series, I lined up panels on the lawn and ran an edge trimmer against them. The line trimmer didn't damage the perlite concrete at all. Like the vermiculite, the perlite based concrete mixed easily and was noticeably lighter. And this made it easy to fill the forms. It settled well with vibration and has a smooth texture while troweling and edging. It came out of the forms easily and has a nice smooth finish. It passed the weed eater test, so I think all in all, perlite concrete in these proportions makes a good lightweight alternative for these garden panels. The panels weighed, on average, 34% lighter than regular concrete, and this was a bit lighter than the similar vermiculite panels from Part 3. The CSA perlite panel was 45% lighter. Since CSA concrete is stronger than Portland, I was able to use more perlite in the mix. The drawback is the CSA cement is more expensive and sometimes harder to find, and the Portland ones appear to be strong enough and light enough. The colors worked well and blended evenly. I think I could have used less of the red as it came out deeper than I expected. The black looks pretty good though and I'd use that again and maybe even more. I'm happy with perlite and it makes a light, strong and durable panel for these garden boxes. I wouldn't hesitate putting them in my garden if weight was an issue for me. So I hope that was helpful and interesting. If you have any questions then please add them to the comments below. I try to answer as many as I can, especially in the first week of posting a video. If you like what you see here, then please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. In the next episode, I'm going back to look at Aircrete. I've worked on some new blends and got really good results, so that's coming right up. This is Kent from Man About Tools. Thank you for watching and we'll see you soon.